All right, <clears throat> we're continuing learning this Mimer uh, Hasidic discourse, which was uh, said by the first Rebbe of Chabad, relevant to this week's Torah portion. This is like we said about 250 years ago. <clears throat> and the, 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 the topic of the Mimer, the topic of this is, in general, like all the, the discourses in Chabad, are to show that everything that is written in the Torah is also inside of us. And it's also something very dynamic and good inside of us, good inside of us. But in this world, there's nothing that's really good totally, that there's no bad in it. There has to be a little bit of bad in everything <clears throat> that there is. It says the, okay, so <clears throat> here we're talking about the, 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 and of course, the goal of the whole business is to bring Mashiach. And Mashiach is going to be the example of totally good. And he's going to also convince the world that it's possible for them to be totally good. Also, <clears throat> all the Jews will return to do the Torah and his commandments. All the non-Jews in the world will do the seven Noahide commandments and all of, with all of their <clears throat> implications of the seven Noahide commandments. And the world will be a place which will be uh, all the potential of good in every human being and every detail will be revealed. That's the idea of Mashiach. But in order to <clears throat> bring Mashiach, as it, de it depends on our readiness to accept Mashiach. Huh? If a person wants to be rich, so it has to be that he's ready to be rich. You give um, $20 million to some bum on the street, he doesn't know what to do with it. Right? He'll go and he'll buy like thousand bottles of vodka or something like that and he'll still have millions of dollars left over he'll drink one half a bottle and he'll, he'll die of an overdose so he doesn't know what to do with all this <clears throat> money with all the good same thing we have to have a little bit of an appreciation of what it means when mashiach comes in order to have an appreciation of what mashiach is because is you have to have an appreciation of god <clears throat> god because the whole thing of mashiach is to reveal the creator in the world that everybody will feel that he's being created and that he's being created by a purpose for a purpose, and that this purpose can only be achieved through the Torah, or with the non-Jews, their aspect of the Torah is the seven Noahide commandments. So we have to have a little bit of appreciation of God. Says the Rebbe, <clears throat> once a person has an appreciation of God, a true appreciation of God, and then God is so tremendously important to us, and so vital, <clears throat> so valuable, to us, that automatically there is love and fear. And a third aspect, which is also called faith. Love because God is so good. Fear because you don't want to do anything against God. God has a will. And faith because you want to get higher levels. You realize that what you feel, what God is, that's just the outside. There's infinite levels, deeper and deeper levels of good that can only be comprehended or apprehended or whatever you want to call it, perceived by faith. It's not even in the realm of understanding. <clears throat> that level, that third level, <clears throat> of can only be, that can't be understood and it can't be grasped. And so I, that can be understood, can be, what do you call it, perceived in this world, only in this physical world, only in this physical world. And that's what's called the arousal of the heart, ruuta deliba. This level of inner, deep, essential, you want to call it burning love for the creator, which is totally beyond any worlds, it's beyond the spiritual, it's beyond, but it's infinitely close to us. This can only be achieved when a Jew is in this physical world, far away from the revelations of God. In the upper worlds, there's the revelations of God, the heavens and this. That's not really what God is. God's revelations are his revelations. It's wonderful. It's uh, aspects of life. But that sounded like something like, let's say, a, a, a person that's rich, right? A person that's rich, but he has no meaning in life. So he's got all the money and he has all the power and he has all of this. So th th all those are aspects of life that are good. But what is life itself? Uh, what is what is meaning of life itself? 
So it's the same thing. Going to heaven, all these heavenly worlds, that's like a billion times more rich than all the money you could have, a million times more pleasure than you could have. But that's only aspects of godliness. True essence of God can only be really connected to <clears throat> in this physical world by a longing, especially this is this is unique to the Jewish people now, a tremendous longing <clears throat> to the creator himself. We're not talking about longing for the spiritual, longing for meaning, longing, <clears throat> longing for, for pleasure, the, the upper world's longing. Those things are, okay, that's, that's good, that's nice. You write songs about that. But here we're talking about the essence of God. And that can only be gotten by a person being in this physical world. And that's the, the how God is a businessman. He takes the Jewish souls, which were basking in this tremendously high level, and he spends them, so to speak, down in this world, invests them in this world with the hope that they will come to this level of deep love. And when they do, what happens? So then they realize their connection to God. They realize how important to God, this physical world is. And then they start to <clears throat> fix up the world, try to inform the non-Jews that God loves them. He's creating them. <clears throat> that they, 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 they don't have to be bumbling around in the darkness with all sorts of cheaters and liars and tricksters and religions and things like that. God himself is creating them. He, 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 the, every, every human being is, is unique, special. But all this can only be achieved in this physical world. That's why this physical world is the essence. So he says, until Mashiach comes, <clears throat> is <clears throat> we're going to have a little bit of trouble <clears throat> achieving this oneness of God. It's not going to be so obvious. <clears throat> we did have a little bit of a revelation of it in when there was the Holy Temple. When there was the Holy Temple, what was the achievement? What was the, the purpose of the Holy Temple? The Holy Temple was that everyone could feel Everyone was aware. Everyone could see. It says, Le'ra'ot, to see. They would go to the Holy Temple. They would see God, and they would be seen by God. What does that mean, they would be seen by God? There's a big man sitting in the, you know, the Wizard of Oz or something sitting in this room. No. They would feel that they're being created. They would simply, everyone would feel, I am being created. I am a creation. I am so tremendously lucky. And fortunate and blessed that God is creating. Not only is he creating me, he's giving me eyes and ears and mouth, and nose. <clears throat> right? This is amazing. And he's also giving me the Torah. He's giving me responsibility. Everyone would go to the Holy Temple three times a year. It says every, every male had to go to the Holy Temple three times a year. And they would feel that they're being created and that they're being created for a purpose. Everyone would feel it. Says he in the time Bizman in the time Shah Beta Midash that there was the Holy Temple Kayim Haya Nimshah Bekinazu. This level was level, this Ruta Daliba, this arousal of the heart was revealed, the Gile or in Sof, with revealed godliness. Where was it? Behechal in the chamber of the Holy of Holies. Like it says in the Tanya, near the end. Liot batal ritzono, l'ritzono yitbrech. That I negate my will to God's will. Right? I feel God is creating me. So, you know, obviously, and he's giving me free choice to do what I want. I can do what I want. To, if God is creating me. And I can do what I want. To, I want to repay him in some way. <coughs> at least be loyal to him. At least say thank you. Like it says, like it says, you will be to me a desirous land. That was in the time that there was the Holy Temple. Now, listen, like we say before, just because God is revealed, it doesn't mean you don't have free will anymore. It doesn't mean you don't have free will. Exactly the opposite. When God's, everything that God makes in the world, he always makes an equal and opposite challenge. Always. And the challenge is always very, very, how do you say, um, uh, 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 oh, there's a really good word for it. I can't remember the word. Um, uh, subtle. Oh, that's the word. It's very subtle. The challenges are very subtle. 
right? You're on the way to the holy temple, and someone says, uh, you know, hey, can you come? We, we need a minion to pray here in the house. Can you come in and pray? You go in, and they're bowing down to a statue. He says, what is this? He says, what is this? You see this big mansion that I'm living in? Yeah. This is because of the statue. What, what type of house do you have? I got a nice house. You know, I got like two rooms. My friend, I have 40 rooms here. This is only one house because I worship this the, 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 the frog god or the, the, the who knows what, the, 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 the cat god. And it works for me. He says, yeah, really? He says, yeah, but, and it doesn't mean you don't, I mean, I'm, as soon as we finish here, we're going to the Holy Temple. We're going to the Holy Temple. We're just, you know, a little. There was idolatry in the first temple. People worshipped idols. People worshipped idols. There were the, it says the ten tribes that worshipped the golden calf. Uh, ben Nevat, a golden calf. They worshipped it for like 200 years. <clears throat> because it was a tremendous desire for <clears throat> idolatry. What is idolatry? Idolatry is egotism. But it, it's refined egotism. You're thinking about going to heaven. You're thinking about spiritual things. But you're thinking about yourself all the time. That's the point. And that's called idolatry. So there was this tremendous revelation of godliness in the first temple, also in the second temple. But commensurate with that, there was also an equal and opposite desire to be selfish. And like I said, it was always very, very, how do you say, natural, just sort of crept in through the fibers of your consciousness, your being, your egotism. Most obvious thing to a person is that he exists. <clears throat> So it says, in the time of the Holy Temple, though, at least they did have the option, the ability to have this tremendous love of God. Ah, but in the time of exile, it says, now we have to search from there, God, Elokecha. And you will find him. Right? This is in, in the book of Deuteronomy. Where is it in, in Parsha? You have to look and see. Parsha Nitzavim, I forget. You have to look and see. Right near the end of the book of, of Deuteronomy. It says that you will, God said, I'm going to scatter you all over the world. I know that you're going to sin. He said to the Jews, I'm going to scatter you all over the world. And despite this, no matter what you do, I'm still going to love you. And I'm still going to gather you all together. Okay, but nevertheless, why were, before God does gather us all together by means of the Mashiach, as um, we have to serve God in this way. You have to search from there. Hashem Elokecha, you'll be scattered all over the world and you will request from there your God, Umatsas, and you'll find him. It continues, because you search for him with all of your heart and all of his. It says, what does it mean? You will search from there. It, doesn't, it could have said, you will search God and you will find him. No, it says, you will search from there. What does it mean from there? I know Kishi is born a wonder person. This is what we're supposed to do. Okay, so pay attention. Kishi is born a wonder person, thinks deeply. Allah, on the opposite, Midarki Hashem, on the opposite of God, when you think how far away I am from God, the Rihuk in the ultimate distance, just like over its owner, just like a person who does sins. Where do sinners get their life? How do they do it? From God's will. That God's will enlivens everybody. So here you have these big sinners, right? You have this, I don't even want you to mention their names, Stalin, worse than that. Who's keeping them alive? How, who's keeping them in existence? God. He's doing these terrible things. He's against God. How can he go, right? Nebuchadnezzar, or whoever, they, they, they're killing Jews. How, who keeps them alive? God keeps them alive. How does God keep them alive? <clears throat> That's God's plan. Like it says, Atam Mechayat Kulam. God, you enliven everything. <clears throat> so, so that's the bad guys God is keeping alive. All of a sudden, a person can think, whoa, whoa hey, one, one, one minute. One minute. <clears throat> that the God is keeping me alive and that I'm alive Right, <clears throat> I think it's because that God really likes me, or you got something. I say I could be a bigger sinner. I could be a, a bigger sinner than, than Stalin, and God would still keep me alive. And even more, Stalin may his name be blotted out forever. He could only transgress seven commandments. There's a seven Noahide commandments. A Jew has the ability to transgress hundreds of commandments. 
He could be my go against God's will much more. And nevertheless, God keeps us alive and he, he, he creates us. <clears throat> How can that possibly be? So it's, what it means is, is that <clears throat> it could be that I am in, infinitely far away from God. What's the proof? I don't have any idea really what God is. I mean, I'm reading about these things. I don't feel God. I don't see God. I just believe that there is such a thing. It could be. Maybe the reason that I just believe and I don't see God and I don't feel God is because <clears throat> I'm receiving life from the exact same place as Stalin is receiving life. Huh? I'm far away. On this, a person has to think. It says, it says how patient God is. This level of God's means long faces. It means patience. But in Kabbalah, this is a tremendously high level. It's like the external level of God's crown. This nimshach comes down from this level called <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> God's patience or long suffering is drawn. Nishtalshalom in Bedrega, Eliona comes from a very high level. Derech Nefila, falling down. Lachayos Akum, to enliven idolaters. Av Shem over Ratzona, even though they're going against God's will. <coughs> huh? That's the way God wakes the world. He has a world, He wants a world. It's not a world where everybody's like angels. If you wanted just people doing what God wants, so you'd have angels. You didn't have to create the world <clears throat> with all the troubles and all the problems. And the Torah would be spiritual. And there's what's called the spiritual holy temple, Yerushalayim Shalmaila. And God, that would have been okay. That's not what God wants. <clears throat> God wants that we should be in a world that's filled with bad, that's filled with confusion and ignorance and frustration, <clears throat> and that we should... Ignore the bad and do the good. That's what God wants. Why God wants it that way? That's you're asking questions on God. That's what God wants. Why is keeping me alive? Ask that question. Don't ask too much. Maybe God will say, hey, you know, he's right. You know. <clears throat> the fact is that God enlivens everything. And that God is keeping everyone not just in li in alive, but, but in existence, creating everything. But say, oh, that's what it means. It's over Ratzon Okach. <laughs> if to transgress God's will, <clears throat> they get so much. Those who do God's will, how much more so? The story goes that Rabbi Akiva was walking with some of his friends in Jerusalem, and, and they saw the temple in ruins, and that a fox came out from the Holy of Holies. Foxes. So, they, the, 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 the Rabbi Akiva's friends, his compatriots, great rabbis, they cried, and Rabbi Akiva laughed. <clears throat> so they said, is the, 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 they said to him, why are you laughing? What are you laughing about? And he said to them, why are you crying? And they said, what do you mean, why are we crying? It's the holy temple. Look at it. There are foxes coming out of the holy temple. The, 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 it's, we're in ruins. What are we going to do? <clears throat> Why are you laughing? He says, I'm laughing for the same reason. <clears throat> it says that the, the, just like the, the prophecy, the prophets on Judaism say <clears throat> that God is going to rebuild the temple and he'll bring everybody back, just like God fulfilled this prophecy that there's foxes coming out of it, Shulim, Holchim, Bo. <clears throat> so fulfill all the other prophecies also that it's going to be good. <clears throat> it's going to be good. The same thing happened. They passed by the city of Rome. I don't know, some big, or big whatever big festivities were going on. And they cried. His friends cried. And Rabbi Akiva laughed. And they said to him, why are you laughing now? You know, until the temple is built, what do you got to laugh about? Here are the Romans. They're, they're rejoicing. <clears throat> having these big parties. Who knows what they're doing? Exactly the opposite of what God wants. <clears throat> and look how they're rejoicing. Look at, look at the, 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 the riches they got, the wine and the, the music. And that's why we're, look at the Jews. The Jews are all cast down and we're suffering. Why shouldn't we cry? So wh why are you laughing? He said, I'm laughing because if the over Ritzono, if people that transgress God's will, they get all this riches and all this fun, <clears throat> the Ose Ritzono, those people who do God's will, how much more so? She Yush Pabachinas Ratzon Elyon that they receive from this upper will of God, 
Shehula Maila Maila Migeder Omen, which is above all the worlds. Shalom Bebekin is Yerida, not in a descent into Chachma and Midos. Elo Bebekin is Penimius Nekudas Aleh, the inside of the heart. Shubekin is Tshuva Yeloh, this is called the upper level of Tshuva, Shekadma Olam, which is before the world. <clears throat> so it's the same thing. Let's say people, you know, the big sinners, whatever, the mafia guys, whatever, so they, all, they drive around in big cars and they have all this stuff and glamorous lives that they live. <clears throat> <clears throat> but there's no meaning behind it. What's the meaning? That's that is their meaning. The meaning that they have behind it is exactly this, only this physical success that they have. So how long does it last? There's no there's no real life, there's no love, there's no how do you say value in the whole business? <clears throat> but it to get receive a kiss from the creator of the universe. To receive a hug from the and the Almighty, that's infinitely greater. But the problem is we have to appreciate it. And that's the whole idea of why Rabbi Akiva laughed. He said, these people, they have no access to anything more meaningful or real than their ridiculous victories and their, their orgies or whatever they do, their, their, their decadence. <clears throat> that's all that they've got. And, but we are connected to the creator, <clears throat> the essence of all being. And for whatever reason, he, he decided that he wants to enliven these low lives also. <clears throat> but they're receiving what's called from God's backside. And we can receive from God's mouth, from kisses of mouth, doing Torah, doing the commandments. Of course, that's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a poor, It's an, it's an excuse and it's true, but it's it's a poor uh, what's it, compensation. Because the fact is that we're suffering. <laughs> After all, we're suffering and no one wants to suffer. And we pray three times a day to stop the suffering, to rebuild the temple, etc. We, we can't say, oh, it's good. You know, we're, we're, let's keep laughing all the time. You know, let, let them destroy more than just the temple, right? It's just, you know, the worse it gets, the better it is. Ha ha, you know, what me worry. That's not the point over here. The point is, is of course, Rabbi Akiva wanted it to be good. But Rabbi Akiva is just trying to find the point of good inside of the bad. And really, the fact is, that's what the Rebbe is trying to say. That point of good that's found inside of the bad is better than revealed good. It's better than revealed good. <clears throat> the Rebbe sort of made famous a song, but it's, 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 it's a sentence in, in, in Psalms. Samalacha nafshi, kamalacha basori. My soul is, King David said, my soul is thirsting for you, it's lusting for you in a land that is a wasteland with, where there's a desert where there's no water. I'm thirsty, he had to run away from his enemies, King David. And then he says, It should only be that in holiness, when I'm in the holy temple, It should only be that in the holy temple, <clears throat> when I see your greatness, I should have the same desire and, and uh, how do you say, the, the, the same f- flaming lust for you, God, as I have now. <clears throat> so that's what the Rebbe is saying. There's a benefit to being far away from God. Because that's what's called tshuva, returning to God. Tshuva ilah, the upper tshuva. V'zeu ki tidrashenu b'cholavavacha b'cholnavshacha says that when you are far away from God, like now when the temple doesn't exist, <clears throat> then if you search for him with all of your heart and all of your soul, hainu, shiafok libo, you'll transform your heart. Mina katsei ala katsei, from one end to the other. Is hapa chashuk transforming darkness to light. Al yudei, by means of bechinus root of the libo, the arousal of the heart. This lima'us bechai olam azad, that you don't want to have any of the pleasures of this world, but libo, that your heart should be drawn <clears throat> to them, rather than only to cling to the creator of the universe. They say, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, that before he passed away, that he held up his hands and he said, <clears throat> he was tremendously rich, fantastically rich, Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi. And he said, he held up his hands to God, and he said, <clears throat> representing the 10 spirit of his soul, that these hands have never gotten any pleasure from the world. And those to be rich is a wonderful thing. To have billions is a great thing. 
<clears throat> but that shouldn't be our pleasure. Our pleasure should be only in serving the Creator. As then it doesn't make any difference if you're rich or if you're poor. It's better to be rich. What's the, what's the question? <clears throat> but if you do everything you're supposed to do to be rich, and you don't become rich, you say, that doesn't, that's what God wants. And there's some people that do everything they can, every mistake possible to be poor, and all of a sudden they become rich, right? Some great uncle or something that lives in the, the other end of the world leaves them a billion dollars, <clears throat> wins the lottery. So the, our richness doesn't depend only on our hard work. on our. <clears throat> but there's something that we have that is rich beyond all the richness that you can imagine over here. And that's supposed to be the basis of our personality, namely a desire to become close to God, an appreciation of God, a love of God, a desire to return as much as possible our attention to the creator of the universe. Not, not easy thing to do. It's an easy thing to talk about. It's even fun to talk about it. But to do it is a little bit more difficult. <clears throat> but it's very rewarding. He calls all this, al Derech Mashal Hasocher. All of this we just talked about, this is like a businessman. That God is a businessman. What does he do? He takes the souls that were basking in the rays of God and receiving all this tremendous <clears throat> godliness, and he puts them into this physical world in order to come to a deeper type of love, this arousal of the heart. <clears throat> uh, a businessman, Motsi Kesev, he spends, he invests his silver and gold, and he takes it out from his possession, from his bank account, Leod Mafazer, <clears throat> that he distributes it with the hope, no support, that he'll make a profit. Kach and Neshama, also the soul. Even though the, the soul is, so to speak, losing its possession of the silver and gold. What did we say silver and gold is? Silver is love. Gold is fear. <clears throat> they lose the reveal, love and fear of God. And the soul comes down last year, and it gets clothed in a body, the nefesh abamis, and an animal soul, and they even call you a name, right? When the soul is up there in the upper worlds, you're just, you don't care about names. Everything is just relating to God, your Creator, right? You're just so happy, and everything. There's no you. Nobody, no one soul calls the other. Hey, Shlomo. Hey, Yehuda. How are you feeling today? Everybody's feeling wonderful. Everybody's feeling <clears throat> the essence of God. Right? There's love, and all of a sudden comes on to the name, to, to the world, and you're not a soul anymore. Who are you? You're Shmerl. Shmerl Grois. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Shmerl Grois. <clears throat> right? And you have a, this size of shoes and this size of this. Your parents are called this, and this is where you live. Right? And you, you go to school, and you have to learn, and you're not so smart, or you are so smart, or you're this, or that. And all of a sudden, you have all bad character traits. Right? You're messing with Shmerl Grois. You took, somebody took my lunch, somebody took my this, I'm going to do all of a sudden, whatever you get totally confused, you forget about your soul totally. That's what's called the, what's called the animal soul. <clears throat> it's really not an animal soul; it's a human soul. But in relation to the godly soul, it's like an animal. <clears throat> Just like an animal doesn't understand mathematics, right? An animal doesn't understand mathematics. So we don't understand God. <clears throat> we don't understand God, and not only that, we understand God. Less than an animal understands mathematics. We just know there is such a thing. <clears throat> That's what's called the animal soul. By means of this, by means of the soul coming down and into the world, and it loses its silver and gold, it loses its love and its fear of God. So there's a tremendous advantage, Beruta Liba, that it can acquire this, this arousal of the heart, Karish Fe'esh, like a flaming fire. And where do you get it from? Mina Hafuch, from the opposite, from not how great God is and how wonderful God is and how close God is and how wonderful, but how far away God is, how far away I am from God, how I am stuck in this darkness, in this tremendous quagmire of certainty that I'm sure that I'm right and I'm not right. I'm not right. And I can't imagine there's any alternative to, you know, to my perception and my, my, my awareness and my axioms that I have in life and my comfort zones, things like that. I can't. And from that fact that I'm so incredibly wrong and so incredibly fooling myself, and from that you come to a tremendous love, Hashem, have mercy on me, right? Tell, take me out of here. I'm, I'm, I'm your creation. I'm, I'm a Jew. I'm your son. 
Every Jew is the son of God. I'm your servant. I want to be, and I don't feel any of these things. <clears throat> then you have a tremendous desire for the truth. <clears throat> you know, when is this talking about? What is this? It's not talking about all day long. The person just walks around the, the, the streets, you know, with his eyes looking up to the heavens and he bumps into, you know, uh, telephone poles and things like that because he's thinking, I want the Lord. All the... This is talking about five minutes when you pray in the morning. Right? When you pray in the morning, you think, you sit down and think, you think about the greatness of God, you think about the oneness of God, you think about, you think about how far away you are and you don't perceive anything and, from, and that you want to, you know it's true, you believe it, that it's true. And you develop a tremendous love for God, how good God is, how good God is. Don't fall into the trap of thinking how bad I am. I'm so terrible, I'm so low, I'm so bad, I'm so this. That's exactly the opposite. What he wants to be saying over here is <clears throat> how good God is, how wonderful God is. I read about it in the Mimer, I don't feel it at all. I don't feel it at all. <clears throat> and the reason is because that God is infinitely, infinitely closer to me than I can possibly imagine. Infinitely closer to me. <clears throat> and he put me in this world in order that I should return to him. I should return my consciousness to him. I return my loyalty to him. That's the better word. But say, well, that's what it means. V'cham. Remember, we had the question before, how can the Eret land of Israel be called Canaan? Canaan was one of the sons of Ham. Ham was the was the evil son of Noah. He was the one that went into the, it says he went into the tent and he saw Noah's uh, nakedness and explains that he castrated his father. He didn't want his father to have any more children because he would have to divide the world up into four parts instead of three. There's already three sons and he didn't want, right? So he did this terrible thing. And Ham, and the land of Israel is called on the name of Ham's son, Canaan. So that, what does it mean? Ham is the father of Canaan. <clears throat> That's why Ham is another one. With a Zokeb Gadol. Ham, who are we? Canaan. Zokeb Gadol. Chamimus. Ham also means to be warm. Ham in, in this physical world is bad, but in its source, like we had love and remember, in its source is very good. Source is very good. Ham means to be warm. Chamimus rish fe'esh. That's this warm, flaming fire. Shall I ever a flame that goes up and it's above? May I apach from the opposite from this world? Who also begin is Canaan. That's Ham, this warm, this heat, this flame of love for God that comes only by the soul being trapped in this world. This is what makes it a Canaan, a businessman. <clears throat> That's the whole reason that God put us in the world in order that we should come to this Ham, in order that we should come to this warm feeling and this living love for God. Huh? First of all, in order to come to this tremendously high love of God, this arousal of the heart, you have to, have, first of all, begin from the beginning, which is called lower fear. It comes from God's kingship. Which is called of Kedusha. Jimmy said that from this, how can you come to this tremendous love of God? First of all, you have to you have to know the basics. You have to have a basic connection to God, right? Don't think that God is your buddy, and you can your loving is just a casual thing. God is the creator of the world. That's really awesome. <clears throat> That's really awesome. If God wanted to, in one second, He could just stop creating you. Your whole life, if there's people that I've the, the, a gun gets pointed at them, they faint. Right? They faint from uh, the, the, the death is coming near them. Right? They don't know what to do. They're berserk. Right? They had these movies. I remember when I was a kid, King Kong, whatever, all of a sudden you look and you see there's this huge gorilla that's like the size of the Empire State Building or something appears. And, oh, it's a frightening, right? And it's different. Well, God is infinitely, infinitely more frightening. Even one angel is more frightening. Why is it frightening? Because it's so real, it's so powerful. And it's it's power of of how do you say destruction if it wants to is infinite. The same thing with God. In one second, He could just stop creating you. Pop, that's it. You're gone. So first of all, you have to have a little bit of respect. That's that's a good word. Respect. That's what's called the lower fear. 
the lower fear is you have respect for God, right? God, if he wants to, he can zap me. He can crush me. He can stop creating me if he wants to. He's got the power to stop creating the whole world, the whole universe. So have a little respect now. When you're talking about God, respect. That's one of the reasons why we don't write God's name in full. You write G dash D. And really, you're not supposed to write God's name in any language. You're not really supposed to write adios, right? Adios, adieu. Dios and Dio, that's God. You're not supposed to write it because it might get thrown away. God, you have to have basic respect <coughs> for God, even God's name. That's why we call God Hashem, the name. Because we have respect. God is so, you have to know what we're dealing with. Then we can start revealing ourselves. Listen, good, you have respect. This is for the king. The king is awesome. He's in his palace. Is this? But you should know the king really loves you. And the king is your father. Huh? But you have to remember, this is the king now. So first of all, you have to have what's called the lower fear. And from this lower fear, then you can come to this level of Canaan, the other Mosne Mirma. It says that the 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 Canaan, Canaan, the the this businessman, he has what's called uh, the, the false scales, scales of tr trickery. In order to come to the inner level of the heart. What does it mean, trickery? That you have to trick yourself in the world. And it's, it's as though you are a regular person, normal, everybody. But the fact of the matter is you're not. You're a Jew. You're a creation of God. Your loyalty is to God. That's like being a spy. Right? You're in the world, you're eating, you're sleeping, you're doing business, but your real loyalty is to the creator of the universe. You're here to make the world a better place. The world on its own destroys itself. That's that's one of the big faults with the theory of, uh, what's it called, of, 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 of evolution. That in fact, there's no there's no example, as far as I know, I mean, I'm not a, a there's no, of, of things developing. Everything is atrophy. In the world, there's no <clears throat> observed Example of things developing higher, of a you know of of uh, of, 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 of a cell becoming suddenly a tree, and a tree becoming a frog, and a frog becomes a monkey, and a monkey becomes a pure person. Right? I mean, there's the other way around. People become monkeys all the time. There's no problem, right? An animal when it dies, so it becomes like uh, you know it becomes vegetable. I mean, that's what it says, Korov Hashem Lechol Korov. That's what it means. God is close to anyone who calls him, anyone who calls him, but truth. Hainu. <coughs> what does it mean? Calling in the truth. In the truth. What does it mean? From the true inner point of the heart. Shahari Anu Roim, we can see the Ganba Pumachtarta Rahmana Karya says that a thief, before he goes to steal, he calls out to God. A Jewish thief, I don't know if it's non-Jewish thieves, but Jewish thieves before they, they go to steal. That's what it says here. I mean, I'm, I'm not really acquainted with Jewish thieves. And if I am, then they don't let me know that they're thieves. But when they go to do their job and steal, then they call out to God for help. <clears throat> How can they call out for God? What do you mean? They believe in God. What's the problem? It could be even the guys of Rosh Hashiva. Who knows? He, he, he teaches about God. But when he needs that money, he's willing to steal. And he, not only does he is willing to steal, he doesn't say, listen, I really need the money. What can I do? He prays to God for success. He figures that God agrees with him. Says, and, but he believes in God. 100% he believes in God. That's why he's praying to God, because he believes in God. He doesn't trust in God. He doesn't think that he can get this money or whatever through <clears throat> permissible means. Okay. But nevertheless, he has what's called external faith in God. Nevertheless, Omer Berisho, he, he remains, the thief, remains a, a, a thief. And he doesn't return, go back from his, now, from his opinion, from his, what do you say, his ways. The thief. We can see, a person can have love and fear in his heart. And it, it goes away, like after prayer. Person can pray. He can say, "Ma Rabu Ma Hashem." He'd be crying with 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 longing for God, and must. And then it comes back. He goes to the bathroom and says, "Comes back. Somebody took his chair. Somebody took his, his sitter. Right? Oh, it says, "Hey, what are we? What are you doing? Right? 
He gets up. What happened? Uh, just a second ago, you were you were the, clinging to the creator of the universe. God is creating everything. There's nothing except for God. So it's, sure, there's nothing except for God. But my chair. Uh, he took my my seat. I know. So we see me because this love of God and fear of God is only grasped in a person's mind, besechlo, and his his intellect, in a surrounding way. It doesn't go inside. That his heart should be excited. But really let me from the depth of the heart. I know, which is not the case. If you call out to God in truth, that's what it means. The inside of your heart. We're in this world. The world tests us. Says that the truth is forever and it will never move. And that's what we can achieve by being in this world, truth. The soul as it is up in heaven, if there's the least you say, difficulty or <clears throat> test, trial, if something prevents it from love or fear, the soul can't take it. The soul is not able to. You take the greatest person in the world, the rhythm, and you put him into a, a difficult situation. Now let's see how he acts. Right, a person when he's rich, he can be great. As soon as he hasn't got money, let's see what happens. <clears throat> that is <clears throat> the test of this world. But by means of this test, sometimes it's compared to living water, pushes up through the ground, and that becomes what's called a mayan, a wellspring. That's the that's the soul. Okay, my friends, we'll continue this tomorrow. We're, now we're going to learn the dvar malchut. Dvar malchut. <clears throat>